But it wasn't long before I earned myself a reputation as a guy who would do fucking anything, back out of nothing. But then we're filming the first movie, and I'm supposed to shove a toy car up my ass. I had put things in my butt. Fireworks, chicken, fish. I would never do that again, because I'm vegan now. <laughs> but I had never really popped my butt cherry. I didn't care, this idea was so funny, you know? Doc, I don't know, I drank so much and my butt hurts, like, you know, I need an egg. <laughs> Thing was that I accidentally told my dad the idea and something about the way he said, oh no. <laughs> He's like a super successful businessman, I know that's surprising, but he could handle a lot of things. A car up my butt was like over the line. So I told Johnny Knoxville and the guys, I can't do it, I gotta back out, I, you know? I said, instead, I think I can drink a whole beer through my nose. If you make me a beer bong where the hose forks into two thinner hoses, I'll put one in each nostril. So they made it for me. I showed up to the set, I poured the beer into it, stuck the hoses in my nose, and <coughs> I'm telling you, I pounded that beer so fast, it was amazing. But none of the other guys even giggled. And then Knoxville said, that sucked. Stick it up your ass. <laughs> to which I immediately replied, we already established, I don't put shit up my butt. <laughs> which would have got me off the hook. If I left it there, I would have been free and clear. But then I foolishly added, and it probably wouldn't work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but now we gotta find out if it works because we're scientists. <laughs> so I realized I fucked myself, you know, literally. And they chopped off the thinner hoses, so I'm staring down the barrel of a dick-thick, girthy-ass beer bong hose. And if you think you know this story because you saw the butt chug in the second movie, I'll remind you, this was the first. Nobody saw this. I started off by getting butt-ass, dick, and balls naked. Except I kept my shoes on. I laid down on the ground in the public parking lot we were filming in. I took that beer bong hose and I just went for it, full force. It was shocking how easily it glided right in. I wasn't ready for that, man. I was mortified to have my buddies standing around watching it go in that easy. And I was so fucked up on drugs and alcohol, it did not even occur to me to pretend to struggle with it. <laughs> No, it goes right in. And the guys are jazzed now. You know, they, they get to pouring that beer into my butthole right away. They're jumping up and down, chanting, chug, chug, chug. And right away, I can feel that cold beer inside my asshole, as you do. But nothing's really happening, you know? I tense up, I loosen up, I wiggle around, and then I do all of the above and kick. Lo and behold, the level of beer drops. My asshole took a gulp. <laughs> it was amazing. The guys are going wild. This is the greatest thing they've ever seen. And I'm, now I'm wiggling around and I'm kicking. Sure enough, I get a rhythm going. Boom, 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 boom. My butthole is fucking guzzling that shit, right? But I don't know if it was because I hadn't slept for three days I had done nothing but cocaine and wash it down with liquor. For some reason, as much as this beer is going in my asshole, all this murky, yeasty, cloudy, brown shit is coming out, like right into the hose. You can see it, that beer was getting murkier and murkier. It was like watching a Budweiser turn into a Sam Adams. <laughs> And it was so fucking disgusting, even my buddies couldn't take it. Like, chug, chug, turned into, oh, God, oh. And so, like, it, they decided it had to stop. Out comes the beer bong, and they take it away. I'm laying on the ground, butt naked, fully loaded. And I giggle. Because <laughs> I can feel what's going on. And I squeeze. I'd say I farted. <laughs> but my butthole spit. 
This dark, coffee-looking shit beer. Looked like my asshole was chewing tobacco. <laughs> and I'm laughing, and like, but then all of a sudden I get this inspiration. This great idea comes to me. And I like wiggle up, I go up into this crazy yoga pose, right? Like, I mean, I'm like right up in the air, my body's curled over like I'm about to suck my own dick. But I didn't. I shit the rest of that beer into my own mouth. <laughs> I know, I know, it's gross. I drank shit straight from the tap. <laughs> and I was ah, and I drank it, yeah, I drank it. You know, like, and the most incredible thing is that it wasn't in the movie. I asked the director, I was like, why wasn't it in the movie? He said, because it was illegal. <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand, I still don't understand. I started seeing a sex therapist. I asked him to help me change my ways, and he says, okay, on your next trip to Mississippi with the big show in the casino, as soon as it's over, go back to your hotel room by yourself and call me up to check in. So that's what I did. Did the show, back to my room, and I called him up, and I said, hey, man, thank you so much for being there for me. And then I hung up the phone and left. <laughs> <laughs> If you know when you're on a diet, all you can think about is food. It was like I turned into a werewolf on the prowl for a fur burger. <laughs> I went back down to the casino. I was, ah, ah. Stalking prey. But all I saw was just disgusting looking people smoking cigarettes on slot machines. And, ah, ah, ah. and I'm like, this isn't gonna work. So I went back up to my hotel room and I got on Twitter. I'm thinking there's got to be a female in the area who just sent me a message saying that she wants to hook up right now. And there was totally a message like that. <laughs> but it came from somebody who had no profile picture. Just a fucking egg. <laughs> and you know you might be a sex addict when you invite that fucking person to your hotel room, <laughs> which is what I did. I sent a private message with my room number. It said, Come on over. <laughs> as soon as I hit send, I was like, what the fuck did I just do? What did I just order to my room? Sure enough, a little while later. I'm hiding behind the bed, holding my breath, thinking if I just pretend I'm not here, that person will leave but I was way too curious to do that. <laughs> so I tipped over. When I looked through the people, I'm like, no way, she's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't exactly good, <laughs> but at this point, I don't care. I open up the door, I'm like, come on in, this is great. Maybe we'll watch a movie. So we get on the bed and I ask her, what do you do? She says, I'm a webcam whore. <laughs> part of me is thinking, this is terrible. What am I doing? The other part of me is thinking, webcam whore. Cool. <laughs> this will be a slam dunk. So I get confident. Right away I start stroking her hair. But she wants to keep talking about being a webcam whore. And it gets really creepy when she says, guys can be pretty mean, because when I take off my top, I have horrible scars all over my boobs from a botched boob job. Part of me is thinking, all bad, abort mission. But the other part of me is thinking, I am a premature ejaculator. And those scars could help a lot. So let's just see how fucked up these tits really are. Maybe I'll last longer. And that's what happened. <laughs> but it was incomprehensibly demoralizing. Here I was doing exactly what I promised myself over and over and over that I wouldn't do. And now I'm doing it with Franken tits. 